All right, the second part of this unit, uh, we're going to be focusing on uh, the marine biome of our aquatic biome section. Uh, we just wrapped up the freshwater section, so we'll be looking specifically at uh, the marine biome. Oceans, uh, that includes coral reefs, uh, those, types of, uh, those types of habitats. Um, our oceans can be broken down into four major zones or categories. Uh, you have the intertidal zone, pelagic, benthic, and then the uh, abyssal zone. And these are moving from close to the shoreline, uh, further down into the, uh, the lowest depths of the ocean. So let's get a few characteristics of each one real quick. Uh, the intertidal zone is going to obviously include the part of the ocean that, that comes in contact with the, uh, uh, with the continent or with the land, so your shorelines. Uh, they'll include tidal pools and those types of things. Um, your uh, pelagic zone is going to make up roughly about 65% of the of the ocean. Okay, it's going to make up a large majority of the ocean. Most of the ocean is made up of the pelagic zone. This is your open ocean area. Um, you do have. Uh, you do have your large fish are going to be found in this area, large mammals are going to be found in this area. Um, do you, have, you still have the, uh, the photic uh, processes going on, your, uh, your uh, zooplankton and, and uh, phytoplankton and you know, those types of organisms are going to use that, uh, use that as a resource. Uh, then you start moving further down, you start getting below the, the uh, pelagic zone, uh, you're, you're talking about um, parts of the ocean where it's, you still get sunlight, just not a lot, okay? You get uh, uh, kind of like down towards uh, coral reefs and the bottoms of coral reefs, even a little bit further than that, you're going to be looking at uh, your bottom sand dwellers. Uh, some of the dead organisms can float in this area. A lot of your uh, uh, scavengers, um, but there's still going to be some light that can uh, that can sift through to this area. And then the abyssal zone. This is the very furthest depths of the ocean. You're talking about like the the uh, Mid Atlantic Ridge, the Marianas Trench. Um, extremely high pressures due to the amount of uh, of water uh, sitting on top of these areas. Your very, very large mammals that die eventually float down to these areas, or they can, and this is where you'll get the uh, kind of the, the cleanup crew of scavengers uh, that, that are down this area. No light, um, very, very calm and still, smaller creatures, that type of thing. Uh, here are just some pictures to represent. The picture on the top is really good, it shows you especially for the intertidal, it shows you like tide pools and the different organisms that you can find uh, in that area. Uh, benthic zone, you can uh, coral reef section you'll find uh, in the benthic zone and then your abyssal, you'll you notice the absence of light. Uh, you'll find things that are very unique down in this area that can only grow in this area or live uh, in the abyssal zone due to the high pressures and the cold temperatures. You'll find hydrothermal vents in this area and so forth. Uh, so let's look at coral reefs in a little more detail. Uh, they can be found in the benthic zone. Um, they are going to be found closer to the edge of continents. Maybe they surround islands uh, as well. Uh, the water is usually nutrient poor. A couple of reasons. Warmer, the warmer the water, uh, the, the less nutrients available. Uh, the water is not so deep that the water is still, so the waters are still going to be able to be, uh, be warm. Um, coral is the primary, uh, the primary uh, reef animal. Uh, that's what the coral polyps are what build the actual reef itself. Uh, but then you'll have a lot of the uh, uh, coral animals that are attracted to the reef due to uh, protection. They can find uh, food due to algae um, and plankton that can be found there. Um, you'll also get. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, reef animals that, that like to grow on substrates like your sponges and your uh, uh, you know, things of that nature. Sea urchins you'll find and sea stars that once again they'll be the scavengers and the cleanup crew for, uh, for these areas but it's also it's, it's a really good habitat for uh, for being able to hide and to 
uh, live in stealth and um, those types of things. Uh, oceans are very important. Okay, just like when we talked about freshwater, uh, oceans are going to provide a very large supply of, of a food resource for us, for transportation, obviously those are the two big things. But some other things that the oceans provide that, that we would think of more as indirect would be they help con regulate the climate of our planet. Okay, um, especially when you're looking at the polar regions and the amount of water that's frozen versus the amount of water that's warm. Ocean currents help uh, move and transport cooler temperature or cooler water, which help in turn regulate cooler temperatures. Um, it is the largest ecosystem on the planet, so it holds the most uh, biodiversity on the planet. Uh, it's, the oceans are our number one provider of carbon sinks, which means that they hold the most carbon that is produced from, uh, from processes that occur on our planet as well. And obviously, we are having issues with uh, uh, with the destruction of of, uh, of these zones of our aquatic biomes. We've lost over half of our wetlands due to agriculture processes, um, whether it be swamps, marshes, uh, estuaries. Um, the more we grow, the more we need uh, food, and so we're going to farm and we're going to irrigate these areas to uh, for those purposes. Uh, rising sea levels have always been an issue. We are, we are in, a, in a stage in the earth cycle to where uh, it's, it's been coming out of the ice age for a while and it's actually starting to, uh, to trend to its, its natural cycle of a warming period. Um, that's not all due to humans, but the humans have accelerated the process. This has caused a rise in sea levels. Okay, so we've lost about over 10% of our beaches due to erosion from rising sea levels, also due to development. Um, most of the beach habitat has uh, oceanfront property uh, attached with it. Um, offshore fishing, offshore drilling are big issues with, uh, um, with habitat destruction. A lot of uh, illegal fishing practices occur where they, they use this process of dredging or you know, dragging large nets uh, on the bottoms of the, of the, through the ocean, it, it catches fish that they don't want, they, they leave them, the, those fish die, it, it can destroy coral habitats, break apart the coral, break apart the reef, uh, using dynamite um, uh, to catch fish in certain places. Uh, obviously oil, offshore oil drilling, we've seen in the news the issues with that, everything from BP and other places uh, that, 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 have, uh, that have we've seen in the news. 25% uh, of our corals um, have become severely damaged to where they're going through a bleaching process. Now bleaching processes are natural because as the, the earth continues to warm naturally, not due to us, but it's, it's on the cycle where it continues to warm naturally, um, the water is going to continue to warm. Corals can only live in about a 70 to 85 degree range of temperature. But as those waters continually warm, the bleaching process is going to occur, killing off our coral. Uh, invasive species are also a big thing. Now, invasive species are usually human caused, okay, human population caused. We, uh, uh, we develop in certain areas, in certain habitats, and it pushes uh, species that live in those habitats out, and they have to go somewhere, or they die, and so they encroach on other habitats and other biomes, and so they become invasive. They start taking over. There's no natural predators in these other biomes or these other habitats. Uh, they, they're able to uh, eat the, uh, dig into the food chain and not be considered a, a, uh, a food source because there are no natural predators, so they become invasive. Um, other ways through uh, human recreation, uh, through travel and uh, sporting, uh, sp uh, boat sporting, and those types of things, and fishing, we inadvertently um, and sometimes on purpose, we, we transport uh, species from their native habitat to, to another habitat, um, and then once again, they, they, they can take over, there's no natural predators, um, and then it breaks down the whole food chain system and the whole habitat. There are solutions and there are efforts that are, that are being applied to try to, uh, to try to help these things. Uh, laws to protect habitats, laws for uh, um, 
commercial fishing and sport fishing, uh, those types of things. Regulating the fishing industry is really big. Um, setting up no fishing zones and reserves, trying to protect the habitats as much as possible. Same thing with wetlands, uh, doing the same thing, setting up reserves or preserves for the, wetland, for the wetlands. Um, trying to set up laws to help better manage water supply in the rivers and lakes. Um, and then obviously the development of coastline. These are solutions that are, that are being put forth through laws and legislation and practices to try to preserve some of the natural habitat uh, in, the, in these aquatic biomes.